So originally, I bought these in the electrical aisle at the hardware store. Um, thinking I could just, these are aluminum, it says on the package, I could just put them up on this some way on this rod, weld them to it, and then I wouldn't have to worry about drilling this out and putting a set screw in there. Um, I tried that and it completely failed. Either they coat this with some sort of an anti-arc material. Uh, maybe they do that because this is an electrical lug. So maybe they put some kind of coating, um, anti-arc coating, so that it prevents arc, but when you're arc welding, or I was TIG welding with an electrical arc, um, it, it was doing some really weird stuff. Um, so either that, they played it with something, that's why it didn't work, or the fact that it's such thinner, smaller material that it just melted away too much heat compared to this. But it was really weird when I had my arc on this. It, it almost would like vaporize it. First I thought it also was magnesium, but I looked at the package and it says aluminum. So for whatever reason you can't find an easy workaround and just weld this to here. You either need to do what I do. Um, the little key. You probably don't even need a keyway. You could probably just clamp this directly to the round, but I thought it was nice to have that. It kind of holds it on center in there. And then just use some hose clamps. So I also found a male dents. So if you look at the comparison, did a pretty good job. The only thing you have to worry about is really this how far that sticks out which is easy easily correctable if you have it too much you could just file it down a little bit until it fits um, and this distance from here to here you have to worry about because you want this surface this flat surface and when it goes in there and starts to cam over it draws this in and you want that flat surface to press against this surface so you have a good contact area um, and that was the hardest part and actually on this one let me pull it apart real quick actually on this one I didn't I did too much stick out before I welded it and it was still loose. This wouldn't clamp up against that surface. So, um, I used some more of that aluminum braze and I did this plate up and put a, put a bunch of material down. Built it up a little bit. So, definitely err on the side of too short for your cam lock if you're building these again. Here is, uh, so obviously you see that, that's like a automotive solenoid. That's rated for 80 amps, probably 12, 24 volts or whatever, because of the automotive world. And I chose that just because I wanted a way to disconnect power on the gun. You know, I was thinking of having a toggle switch that would open or close that solenoid so you'd have control at the gun it's only rated for 80 amps okay so obviously you see I had to fabricate that thing in there that's why it took a whole day to build this thing but the the reason that this was a failure at least for the time being was because I powered this off of my my Colossal Tech Super 200P 4-in-1 machine and I had it on stick 
I had it on DC and this is rated for 200 amps of stick welding okay so I had it up on stick welding cranked all the way up to 200 amps and I thought for sure you know that little handheld gun gets gets that copper tip hot enough to melt solder and solder wires and stuff together typically well if you power it with this monster I should be able to melt the dang um, copper uh, tip and I was wrong that's that was my failure um, and and I didn't understand why it wasn't why it wasn't working and after doing some thinking on it I realized that even though I had 200 amps flowing through this thing 200 amps is not enough to heat this up to um, 750, 1000 degrees that we're looking for maybe even more Fahrenheit temperature it's not and that little I took apart the little handheld gun the little craftsman um, soldering gun and all it is is a transformer about that big and it's got its primary windings from the 120 volt AC coming in and it's got um, a secondary winding which goes straight to this tip and there's maybe 10 wraps on that secondary winding. So what that little 100 watt gun is doing is it's creating a ton of amperage on its output, on its secondary winding. And I don't, don't know for sure, because um, you can't really fit my, my amp clamp around here to, to measure it, what it is, but I would uh, estimate it's around 300 to 400 amps that little 100 watt gun is putting out and it's probably at I mean we could do the math with Ohm's law but it's probably at uh, around a volt or something really low voltage coming out but you need your super high amperage to get this thing hot because these tips are pure copper and there's very low resistance I can't even measure resistance um, of this with my my standard multimeter. So that being said, um, with a really low resistance copper, um, it takes a lot of amperage to get this thing hot. So that was my failure. I thought, well, hey, it's a big welder. It's going to get the thing really hot. Um, it didn't. It didn't. And that little 100 watt gun puts out more amperage than that 200 amp welder did. It's counterintuitive, but that is that is the elect electrical theory behind it. So this thing's only rated at 80 amps, and I'm going to need I'm going to need I'm thinking around 500 amps or so probably between three to six hundred amps to dial this into the heat I want I want this thing I want to be able to get this copper tip glowing hot red for a short period of time I don't want it to melt or anything um, and I looked into using resistance some sort of resistance wire here because if I would have put a resistance wire and I did the math if I could find a some sort of a nichrome or canthenol sometimes it's called wire that was about this thick and was about half an ohm resistance I could put 50 amps on from my welder I could put not the whole full 200 I was trying but I could just put 50 amps through it and with that one ohm resistance, it would create a lot of heat. 
So that's that's the key there is the resistance. This has zero, nearly zero resistance, but if I were to find some some resistive metal, then I could get my heat with much less amperage. But um, I looked into that, and you can't really get thick resistive wire. At least I couldn't really find it. And I want it thick. You know, I want it heavier duty because I'm building a high-powered solder iron. You want something, you know, thicker to, to push into the, the leads and to get the thing hot. Another reason why I decided to stick with copper is um, it conducts obviously a lot better than a resistive wire. So if you're trying to transfer heat into a joint, um, you're going to do a lot better with hot copper than you are with hot nichrome or canthenol. So, decided to stick with this. What does that mean? I need more amps. I need a lot higher current than I can get out of my 200 amp welder. <clears throat> so, this has got to go because this is only rated for 80 amps continuous, yeah, it would probably do double that, 160, 200 amps um, for a you know, shorter period of time. But I'm planning on putting, um, like I said, 3 to 700 amps through this thing. And that's going to be a weak link. Weak link. I, could, I could feel this thing starting to warm up with... Uh, the 200 amps I was putting through it. So um, I'm going to just bypass this. Um, even though I spent all that time building it into here, um, this is my first failed attempt. I didn't sit down and do enough of the theory. I just went and took a stab at it, thinking that my welder would be plenty, but it's not. So getting rid of this, I've decided I'm just going to take a bolt and just take this flange and this flange, put them together, put a bolt through it, call it good. And then I've been, you know, doing, see, I've seen some videos on YouTube of guys who have built spot welders, um, low voltage, super high current transformers out of microwave transformers. And so I tore apart my microwave this morning do the same thing in theory, only not do a spot welder with it, hook it up to my high powered soldering gun. Um, so what I have to do today is cut out my high voltage secondary winding. This is lots of wraps at thin wire to get your high voltage out. So I'm going to try the cutting method. There's kind of two methods to taking these apart and re-wrapping these transformers. Um, there's welds on the side. This is basically made of um, iron plates. I don't know if you can pick that up, but a bunch of iron plates sandwiched together in two shapes. You've got an E shape. This runs down to here. That's your E shape. No, no, I'm s Yeah, right. E shape. And then you've got a bar, your eye shape. And then they weld those shapes together after they assemble it. So one method of taking these apart is to grind out these welds. And then you can just pull apart your E and I. And then do whatever you need to do. Put it back together, weld it. Um, the other method is and uh, learned this from Peril Chap. Check out his channel. He just takes a hacksaw, cuts the, the windings on one side, and then takes a punch and punches this U shape, what's left of the coil, punches it out. So you've got a hole here and here, and then you feed your wire through. In this case, we're going to go with a lot heavier gauge wire. I think I've got one out cable. We're going to see how many wraps we can get in there. And then this will be a step down transformer instead of a step up. And it'll step down to 
um, maybe a volt or so, and uh, hundreds of amps. I've seen people who built these and they, they've got 800 amps out. So that should, we'll see what 800 amps or we're close to that will do to our high power soldering iron. And stay tuned and I will uh, show you. Thank you.